We continue honoring Black History Month, and we're happy to bring topics that are relevant to the community. One of them is health services to black Americans. Reverend Brennan Francois, the Chief Diversity Officer for AU Health, is joining us this morning, and we are so happy to have you. Good morning. Thank you. Excited to be with you. Thank you both for having me. Yes, sir. So there's a term that you like to use, and it relates to this topic, and that's knowing and being known. Um, tell us about that. Sure. Um, I think one of the things that divides us is our inability to really get to know someone. So so I do a lot of public speaking around the world, and on one occasion I was at an elementary school, and this little kid was in the audience, can I introduce the speaker? And uh, the principal said, yeah, come on. So the little boy stood up and he said, I want to introduce to you our speaker for the day. His name is, what's your name? <laughs> His name is Brennan Francois, and he's from, where are you from? And he's going to talk about, and as he turned around and asked me what I was, what I was going to talk about, the principal took the mic and said, I thought you knew the speaker. Little boy said, never saw him a day before in my oh, life. There you go. <laughs> and my point is, it's hard to introduce someone you really don't know. And so if we're going to understand each other, communicate with one another, relate better to one another, we've got to know each other. So knowing and being known is a key component in that, in that uh, spirit of understanding. Okay, so what can you do to achieve that level of knowledge, familiarity, trust? Yeah, I think it begins with having curiosity. Um, we often can see from the exterior what our differences or our similarities are, but to have curiosity about what's beyond that. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I'm in the Augusta Mall on one occasion, and I noticed this guy that has tattoos all over his body, hands, arms, chest, face. and. I became very curious. Often, we, w when we have curiosities, we don't engage people. We just assume. And so you can make all kinds of assumptions from the tattoos, but my curiosity led me to him, and I said, you know, I hope you don't mind, but I'm just curious about your tattoos. And he said to me, these aren't tattoos, and it surprised me. He said, it's body art, and they all tell a story. And we sat down in the Augusta Mall, and he began to tell me about each piece of art on his body and what it represented. My whole concept toward that person changed because we had conversation. And so my curiosity drew me in, and then I was willing to listen. I did not speculate. I did not assume. I listened, and because I was willing to listen, I learned a lot about this person. I think that's really how it begins, having curiosity, being willing to listen and learn, and not bringing any of our preconceived thoughts to the table, but allowing the conversation to help shape our understanding. That's nice. I like that. Oh, I like that. And sometimes yeah. you just have to be willing to ask questions. You exactly. You that if you didn't ask. Uh, let's talk about your job. So you're the Chief Diversity Officer for AU Health. Um, tell us what you do and what's your goal with that title. Sure. So uh, you might notice that I'm wearing a button that says where everyone belongs. I call it web. And so at AU Health, my primary responsibility is to help bring people together. Often our differences tend to separate or divide us. Uh, but at, in the health system, it's important for the community to know and be known by the physicians and the medical professionals that are serving them. And I believe that creates these connections or this web. And in the web, everyone is valuable. Everyone's important. So when I see a patient, that patient may not look like me, may not have the same experiences or background as me, but that person's important. That's somebody's mother, father, sister, brother, son, daughter, uncle, cousin, grandparent, mm -hmm. friend. They're important to someone. And I want to be, be able to engage them uh, on the level of their importance. And so my role is to help our healthcare community uh, acknowledge and sense the value in our employees and in the community that we serve. It's so important to include diversity and inclusion in the medical field. What is AU doing to, to uh, help recruit uh, more minority doctors? Yes, yeah, so one of the things we're doing is uh, fishing in different pools. And so if you want a different kind of uh, person in your community, you, you have to look in non-traditional places, and that's one of the things we're doing. Uh, in my office, one of the primary 
primary things we're doing is called pipeline programming. We are engaging young people at an earlier age, and particularly young people from underrepresented communities who may not know about the vast number of opportunities in the medical field. So if you talk to underrepresented uh, minorities, uh, you might hear them say, well, I know they're doctors and I know they're nurses. But there's a plethora of career paths in the medical field that we are introducing these young people to, stirring up their interest in health care. And we believe over the process of time in doing that, uh, we will then be able to, to uh, employ more people who traditionally would not go into the medical field. All right. Well, thank you so much for touching on this topic and, you know, discussing diversity and inclusion. I wish we had more time to talk to you. Um, so we'll definitely have to have you back on the show. I'd love thank it you if so you much. would. Uh, absolutely. Reverend Francois, we appreciate Wear it. Wear those socks. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes. Reverend Francois, thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you, too. All